95 Grand Cherokee. Just came in on the hook. Uh huh. Sweet. Okay, so I'm back messing with this Jeep and the hoop. The whole time I was thinking something's not right because in order for this to come out, something has to be out of place. If we try to prop it up right here, you can see how it's not really gonna slide into where it has to, it doesn't reach. So something's not right, and if you look back, let me get a better shot for you guys. And there you go. <laughs> and it's the same exact thing on that side. Hopefully you can see that, and it's uh, right there. That is crazy. We now know what needs to get done. Okay, so we know what parts we have to order. I'm gonna go ahead and remove the drive shaft just so that I can move the car around. And also it needs to come off anyway when we're ready to put it all back together. Just gonna remove these little, uh, what are these, eight millimeters. And uh, if I get the green light from the owner, we'll see if we can go ahead and change this little U-joint uh, right here. Okay, so that was pretty easy. At this point there isn't much else I can do because we have to order some parts and it's just a waiting game. This thing is definitely getting new. Yeah. yeah, that's pretty bad. Same thing on this side. Yep. Alright. Honestly. There's no way in heck I'm putting this back on like that. It's gonna get new joints. It's been a few days, but I finally got a brand new set of U joints for the drive shaft. So let's go ahead and try to get the old ones out. I've been letting a uh, penetrating fluid sit on this for the past few days. I just sprayed all of them and just kept rotating it. Uh, doesn't look like it did anything. They still look just as rusty. But let's go ahead and take it over to the press. So I'm not even gonna lie, using these small pliers the clip came out with no problem at all so hopefully i get lucky for the rest of them actually they all look pretty decent <laughs> considering how old they are they look like they're gonna come out without a problem okay two down let's try to get this one done live not really live for you but you get the idea hopefully it doesn't go flying across the garage Oh, this is much harder with one hand. Come on. You know you want to. Boom. Bob's your uncle. Pick up the drive shaft and the cap on this side just fell right off. Look at the bearings inside of here. They are done for. Let's see if this one comes off. It should. Oh, look at that. What a mess. Anyone remember that cartoon with the dog? What a mess. <laughs> oh, I'm getting old. Okay, so I took it over to the press and it was working, but I found that I'm trying to balance a drive shaft. On the press and then you know stack up everything to get it to press out major pain in the butt so way easier to just use the ball joint press and it seems to be working really good turn off this light Okay, so the last two that were holding on to the actual drive shaft had absolutely no bearings left in it. Just like that, that's how they came off. You could even see how it's deformed on that side and on this side. Where is it at? Oh, right there. Big old flat spot. Alright, so I got 
one side just about done and it was a real pain in the butt uh, believe it or not this is the first time i've actually ever done u joints number one i've always turned down these type of jobs because i just didn't really have the tools to do them you know like the press uh, but the biggest thing here is the ball joint press that's what really uh seemed to work well here uh, but just in general, I just don't get too many jobs uh, like this around here. So it is what it is. Like I said, first time doing this. The concept of installing the U-joints is pretty simple and straightforward. But it's the little things that you have to figure out as you go and just kind of, you know, learn hands-on, I guess. So the first side, you know, going from here to here in the actual shaft, everything went smoothly. And then when I was putting this piece on, so I was able to push it in, I got the clip on this side, but then when it came time to put this side on, it did not go in far enough to put the clip in. So if you look at the piece of rubber right here, you can see how it's, let me get a light. And there goes my light. You can see how the piece of rubber is pretty much bottomed out against the U-joint, there's no gap. Well, on this side, I actually had a gap, and that gap was, oh, I don't know, about the thickness of a needle bearing. <laughs> so, I already knew what was going on. I had to take it back apart, and sure enough, there was like two needle bearings that were up against the cap right here. There was no damage done to anything because, sure, I'm using an impact gun to take it all apart because sometimes you need brute force for that. But as far as putting it back together... Nothing but hand tools, okay? You don't want to force any of this stuff. Everything should work smoothly and go in smoothly. So because I was using hand tools the entire time to put everything together, uh, no damage was done to anything. I was able to fix the needle bearings. And now put it back together. You can see on this side, we now have the clearance right there to put that sir clip in or C clip, whatever you want, retainer clip. But definitely a learning experience. <laughs> I'm all done with this side. Everything moves nice and smooth. Nothing is binding at all. Um, the Zerg fitting you can see get to it easily. Um, in fact, I don't know if there is a way you could install this where you can't get to it because you know everything rotates. So at any given point, you should be able to get to wherever the Zerg fitting is. I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. Uh, but it's in, and I did give it a shot of grease already. Uh, so I'm just gonna go ahead and knock out this side now. The drive shaft is not going to go on the Jeep today because I'm still waiting on those uh, lower control arms. Uh, and that has a potential to go sideways because it's just two bolts, right, holding it in. But it's a 1995, so, you know, what if a bolt breaks or a bolt is seized to one of the bushings? It could easily turn into a nightmare. All right, won't leave you guys hanging. Here's the last one. It's all done. Put some grease in it. Uh, it doesn't take too much effort to move it. I spent about five minutes like giving it some love taps all the way around uh, just to try to get it centered and moving as easily as I can get it and it seems to be moving pretty good. Doesn't take much effort. So that's it uh, for the drive shaft. It is a few days later and I'm finally, finally getting the, the Jeep into the garage. Now the, what took so long is the owner told me that without the drive shaft and the Jeep that it won't go forward it would only go in reverse so I was gonna have to I was gonna have to um, get someone to help me to push it forward and then I could back it into the garage but I don't know the, the car is supposed to be able to drive so I'm like what the heck you know it's got the front wheel still <laughs> anyway so I put it in drive and it actually moved forward so now I'm trying to back it into the garage. It's not so happy. I could, I could tell the transmission just takes forever to grab. You know, you gotta put it in reverse and let it sit for like 15 seconds before it decides to grab reverse. Just trying to back it up here. And we're back to, there we go. Okay, <laughs> so the transmission grabs whatever the heck it wants to. Let's go ahead and try to remove the first bolt. It feels like there's a nut on the back side. But at this point, I just want to see if the, the bolt is seized in the bushing. Alright. 
notice that flushing inside of there is spinning very easily it doesn't seem like it's stuck so let me go ahead and get a, a wrench on that nut on the back side nice came off without a problem and here goes our prize that is crazy now let's go get the one off the other side actually before we go on the other side let's see if we could get this bolt out of here and get that bushing out probably should have grabbed a shorter socket oh whoops. what oh yeah the gods are speaking to me Thank you, Tom Cruise, Keanu Reeves. I got the new part right here, as you can see. But the one thing I've been thinking about is how am I gonna get this to come forward? Because if I were to put this inside of here and put the bolt through it right there, you could see how far off we are. The reason for that is because the whole rear end is shoved back as you can see and that's the reason why the drive shaft I uh, was able to slip out so I need all of this to just very loosely I put the that bolt in back there and I'm looking at the rear differential here and it looks like you know what what's holding this thing in if I were to jack it up from like the body and not support the differential this thing looks like it might just want to fall right out like the spring may come come out you know I it's, it's the upper arm and the lower arm that hold everything into place but with the upper arm right there only installed you can see how the rear end may want to fall down and that spring pop out the second you lift up the body I'm not gonna make that stupid mistake at least that's what I'm thinking because I don't see anything else that's holding the differential in so while I think about this I'm just gonna go ahead and take off this one sweet it sucks it's raining outside floor is wet my back is wet yeah I'm laying on my pad but still still get wet here and there sweet oh thank you no stuck bushings well to me it seems like the bushings like the actual well I'll show you right now get this out of here oh great <laughs> rode all the way over there anyway the actual uh sleeve and the bushing the metal sleeve it's not like a very tight fit like where it fits over the boat just like perfect so that any little bit of rust that develops inside of here you know causes it to seize it's actually a really big sleeve like there's plenty of uh slack between the sleeve and the bolt so even if some rust does develop inside of there it's not very likely that it's going to get seized so that's super cool. I still have not figured out how I'm gonna get this to reach. Initially I was thinking of like a ratchet strap, but I don't see anything to grab onto, you know what I mean? The muffler is broken, see that? Turn this light off. Also, the stabilizer bar is broken. See it right here? Now, I might actually just go ahead and remove this because you never know when, you know, something stupid could happen and it'll hit the tire, maybe puncture the tire or do some, you know, just some type of damage. So, I might just go ahead and remove that. I'm just a big old dummy. I completely forgot about the shocks that hold the rear end. So, I might be able to, uh some better lighting I might be able to lift up 
lift up the Jeep and let the, the rear end just kind of sag down and that might give me some you know space to move it forward so I could get that bolt into the arm uh, I completely forgot about the shocks it was like because from the front I couldn't see them so it was just one of those uh out of sight out of mind type of things tried lifting the rear end up from this uh like this tow hitch I figured I could get both of the wheels off the ground but that thing just so rotted where it bolts up to the body that it first of all it was loose when I touched it and second of all the higher I raise up the car it feels like it's just gonna push through the rail <laughs> so I don't think there's a good option I'm gonna go ahead and let the Jeep back down and I'll just uh, do it from the sides and use some jack stands okay so I think I have a game plan got my jack stand holding up the body and I have my floor jack uh, raising up the rear axle just enough so that the tire is off the ground and I'm using a ratchet strap that is wrapped around this uh, cross member right here and just looking at that that needs to get fixed Anyway, so I got the ratchet strap going around this cross member. Goes all the way to the back. Don't worry, it's not touching uh, the jack. And I got it wrapped around the axle right there. So the plan is to use the ratchet strap to try to bring the rear axle forward. So I hope that makes sense. see if it made any progress as far as bringing it forward still have a lot more to go it's definitely coming forward but I guess she's gonna put up a fight okay so slightly new pan pan where the heck did I get the word pan slightly new plan I got both sides of the truck on jack stands and I have the rear differential lifted just barely off the ground right in the center you can see the floor jack so now everything is off of the ground and I'm hoping that with, without the extra without that weight on the ground the ratcheting strap could do its job and start pulling it in oh man I need some more leverage to try to ratchet this so it's getting very difficult now but I got the ratcheting strap to click one more time and the way I was able to do that is to put this inside of here. It's not grabbing the hole where the bolt goes through. It's grabbing the hole right next to it because the bushing is not solid. Don't worry, I'm not doing any damage to it. But by getting this inside of here, right? And then coming over here to the strap, all I did was put my foot on this and push to give leverage. So try to what it does is it brings the rear end a little bit closer and it creates a little bit of slack on the ratcheting strap enough for me to get that extra click out of it the thing is they have gone far enough with that because even with me doing it right now applying pressure I cannot cannot buzz this thing it is tight so we have to start going for every little millimeter that we can what I'm going to do next is See how I got the bolt down there? I'm gonna take that bolt out and I wanna put the thinnest rod I could find so that technically there's still something in there, but it's gonna let the, the arm come a little bit more forward. <laughs> Telling you, we are fighting for every millimeter here, okay? I can't get the bolt out because some idiot put a ratcheting strap right in front of where the bolt would come out of. So, anyway, so there's a game plan. See this tiny little thin bolt? I'm gonna take this one out and replace it with this tiny one and it's gonna give us that just extra little bit of slack so in order to do that I have to take off the ratcheting strap which means we're gonna go right back to square one okay so I repositioned the ratcheting strap up there and it's out of the way 
and I do have that thinner bolt in here now and what it allows for is this right here you can see how the arm now moves back and forth and it's just gonna give us a little bit more wiggle room so that when we get close to lining this up we have that little bit of extra slack so I hope that makes sense that's a game plan. I don't know if it's going to work. Let's give it a shot. I'm sure someone left a comment already saying I got the arm in backwards. And I figured that out by looking at the old bushings. So the solid one actually goes on the body. And the one that has this, these voids in it go back here. So the ratcheting strap can only move it so much. There's just too many things holding it. So my next step is going to try to be to remove the rear shock. And surprisingly, it is not stuck in the bushing. I got this side out. I'm gonna go ahead and remove that side and let's see if it'll make a difference with the ratcheting strap being able to pull it forward a little bit more. Yes, victory. <laughs> so here's the new game plan. Okay, so I thought about this, okay, went in the house, had a snack, took a piss, right, thought long and hard about this. So it was no longer a matter of the rear axle going forward, because it was pretty much maxed out, okay, it couldn't go any more forward, that's why the ratch ratcheting strap just has so much tension on it. But then, I looked at the, I don't know, the pumpkin, whatever you want to call it right there, where it connects to the drive shaft. And I noticed it was sloped downward a lot. So I thought about it and I'm like, well, if I tilt it up, it should bring the bracket where this arm goes. You know, so basically you do this. If you tilt the front of the pumpkin up, it's going to do this and bring the lower bracket closer to the front of the car. And guess what, people? So as you can see, I have... The regular bolt in there I no longer have that small one so that side is good to go the ratcheting strap still has all its tension on it but when we bring this up now boom look at that it is pretty much there now that is something I can work with and I could get that bolt in there. So let me go ahead and get this done. And here's exactly what I was talking about. I lifted it up because that thing was tilted towards the ground like pretty bad. On that side that I was working on, I uh, gave the bolt a few love taps with a hammer and it slid in. Once I had that side in, uh, we actually lost some tension on the ratcheting strap. It got loose, so that's good. But I came on this side and this side just fit like a glove. Like I was able to put the bolt in without using any tools. It just, everything lined up perfectly. Push the bolt in. So now the next step is I'm gonna go ahead and grab the drive shaft and get it put in place. Okay, sorry about that. I know I had bad lighting this whole video and I had a, you know, I had my light in the house but I was just too lazy to go get it. But under here, there was absolutely no light and it just looked bad. So we get the light now. Oh yeah, she, she fits like a glove. Perfect. And all I have to do is uh, go put the caps on it, which I have right here. All right, so I did end up taking out the first two bolts that I put in and I put thread locker on all four of them. So don't worry about that. Okay, so I am going to say one thing before someone else says it. I know they're going to leave a comment about it. Now, I did not mark the drive shaft before I took it off. Simply because 
I forgot to. I know, classic rookie mistake. Um, so it's just going on whichever way it goes on. If um, if there seems to be a problem, you know, if the, the owner tells me that there's something like a vibration or something like that, I won't have any problem taking it. It's super easy to take this drive shaft off. These four bolts, you slide it forward, the whole thing comes out. Um, so yeah, I won't have any problem having to come back in here and reposition it if I have to. But for now, just gonna go ahead and put it together. And th this is an old truck, okay? Everything is worn up and beat. You, you could see the condition of this truck. It's, it's, it should have been in the junkyard a long time ago, okay? Um, so, if there is a slight vibration, I guarantee you, you won't even be able to notice because the truck just has so many other things wrong with it. Well, at least it has new U joints, right? All right. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put the truck back on the ground, reconnect the uh, the rear shocks, and start tightening down all the bolts for the control arms we just put in. Okay, so I wanted to catch this on camera. Look what's going on with my gun. And it's not the first time it's happened to me. I've had it happen like three or four times. I go to take off the lug nut, and the, the thing gets jammed in place. I can't move the switch, I can't disengage it or anything. The only way to stop it is to pull the battery off. Like I said, it's like the third or fourth time this has happened to me. And look at the switch. It's, there it goes. It let go now. Third or fourth time it's happened to me. And right now... You know, this is the only thing that was on here, so it's not that big of a deal. But imagine when you have like a wobble extension on here and this thing gets locked like that. Crazy dangerous. So, I don't know. I don't know what's going on with it. But, I don't like it. I don't know why it happens. Because other than, besides... Besides it acting up, it normally just works fine. I never feel the trigger get stuck or anything. But when it happens, boy, does it happen. All right, so the reason why I'm taking the wheel off is to get to that stabilizer link so I can take off that broken piece. But I don't think I'm going to be able to get done. I can't even get this wheel off. These things are seized on here. Okay, so this one, the cap fell off of it, so it's no longer a, you know, 19. Uh, I was able to hit on a 18 millimeter socket here and I got this thing on full beans and this is the big gun okay it's not that one it's the big one it was like 13 12 1300 foot pounds and all right so it just made a lie to me <laughs> a liar because I was here wailing on it and it it wouldn't budge all of a sudden boom turn on the camera and it comes off all right so let's see if I can get off the rest Just smashed my finger I'm trying to get this damn thing out of my socket this is way too much work for and me getting hurt for something so st <sighs> I'm not getting paid to do this I'm trying just trying to do it out of the kindness of my heart and it is fighting me like crazy now I'm getting hurt over it yeah okay this is the strongest gun I have. I'm not gonna pull out a breaker bar and then potentially snap off the stud. Throwing in towel, guys. I tried. I hurt myself and it's not worth it. Whatever. I put the lug nuts back on. The two that did come off, I put plenty of anti-seize on the threads. Ran them in, they, ran, they went in nice and smooth. So in the future, if I ever have to take this wheel off or anything, uh, at least I know two of the lug nuts are gonna come off and the rest of them would just fight with them when that time comes. Other than that, I'm done with this video. Uh, thanks to anyone who watched it and who stuck around through this painful video. It's quite a journey. <laughs> I'm sure I'm going to get uh, plenty of comments on uh, what I should have done, how I could have made it easier, what I did wrong. So, that's it. And uh, like always, thanks for watching.